All right, how's it going? I got another video for you. Uh, four Michigan sheriffs say they won't enforce governor's totalitarian orders. So let's get into this. This has to do with the uh, Michigan and uh, was it Governor Whitmore and her weird thing saying you can't like cut your grass, but you can go buy some weed. So let's get into this. Uh, this was written on the 15th, so it was a little over a week ago, I guess. Uh, four sheriffs in northern Michigan declared Wednesday that they would not be enforcing recent executive orders signed by Democrat Governor Gretchen Whitmer implemented to slow the spread of the <laughs> of the novel Wuhan coronavirus in the state. Citing concerns over violating civil liberties, Sheriffs Mike uh, Borkovic, Ted Schindel, Ken Falk, and Kim Cole, who protect counties along Lake Michigan in the northwest part of the mitten said in a joint statement that the governor has created a vague framework of emergency laws that only confuse Michigan citizens. So there is this issue too. It seems to be like you get in these, uh, I guess more in the, more, you get more into the cities that are more like liberal, maybe more like Democrat, uh, democratically ran and they kind of want to be kind of totalitarian, kind of like, abusing their power going outside the reach of what they legally lawfully have <clears throat> then you get out in the more uh the country areas the more well, maybe you can call it urban areas too no not urban but like city versus country and they're like more i mean this is kind of in general too kind of like the more liberal city is more left-leaning you can say generally and the more like country is more right-leaning. So they kind of get into that aspect even with this. As a result, we will not have strict enforcement of these orders, the sheriff said. We will deal with every case as an individual situation and apply common sense in, in assessing the apparent violation. We believe that we are the last line of defense in protecting your civil liberties, which is true. Because I've been doing some videos where like, certain cops are definitely not upholding their oath and violating you know constitutional rights of the citizens and i have to restate this like the bill of rights is put in place to restrict the government from violating individuals civil liberties you can't suspend it it's not in place to like restrict individuals it's in place to restrict the government so they don't become tyrannical and if they do they try to violate your First Amendment. That's why American citizens have their Second Amendment. <clears throat> On Thursday, Whitmer issued one of the most restrictive stay-at-home orders in the country, if not the strictest. While lottery tickets are still permitted under the governor's order, sell of fruit and vegetable seeds are prohibited. Even though home gardening would further enhance social distancing, people are also prohibited from buying paint. <clears throat> Mission A Mission Ganders, did I say that? Are are also barred from traveling between residencies if they own a second property. Though the governor's orders exempt out of state residents, allowing such individuals to take refuge in their Michigan homes under Whitmer, even crossing the street to a neighbor's house unless for specific exceptions has been deemed illegal by the stroke of her pen. So they want you to stay home, but if you happen to have property somewhere else, maybe maybe it's like maybe it's out in the country, maybe you want to like bunker down there to like a lot of this blows over. If you're financially able to, which I'm assuming if you have a second property, you would be. That has been deemed illegal by her. Whitmer first issued a shelter-in-place order on March 23rd with the additional guidelines sparking. Controversy last week, the extreme measures have prompted an online recall petition for the governor's removal to circulate, which has now racked up more than 250,000 signatures as of this writing. Like I said, this is maybe around a little over a week ago. Meanwhile, thousands converge in the state capitol of Lansing Wednesday to protest the Whitmer's rules. And this is with the Detroit Free Press on their Instagram page, it looks to be. Or Twitter, I should say. And Lansing, Michigan was also the place that had the, uh, <clears throat> it was like the, the gridlock protests. And that idea also spread to other places. I think in Columbus, 
not this previous Saturday, but I think the one before they had a gridlock protest there where people kind of were all in their cars, all practicing social distancing, although I think there was some out and about, like I guess in this example here, but kind of as a protest of uh, <clears throat> them being extreme in their measures. And people keep bringing it up. It's like, oh, you want people to die? I'm like, well, if someone... Like, no. And there's also people like... There's like people saying like stupid things like, oh, you're... Look at these people protesting the virus. Like, no, they're not protesting the virus. They're protesting the fact that the government deem arbitrarily that their business is now non-essential. And there's people that's like, I think this week it's up to around 20... I think it's like around 27 million uh, followed unemployment in the last five weeks, which is like unprecedented in any time in American history, except Mabel, except maybe close to the uh, Great Depression, the Great Depression, like, you know, what, 90, 90 years ago. And the fact you're saying people can't provide for themselves, they can't, you're not able to, you know, have a job to make money to buy your food, to pay your rent or mortgage. And then people are like, oh, saying, we'll just get unemployment. Well, first, not everybody's available for unemployment because it seems to be that some people that actually run their own business or maybe they're contract workers, something like that, can't actually file unemployment. And others that have filed unemployment, you know, four or five weeks ago, where everything's like jammed up all of a sudden, is still not able to get it. And there's a lot of people that haven't got their, their Corona bucks or Trump bucks or whatever they want to call it, like the 1200 bucks. But I imagine with most people, the 1200 probably wouldn't even cover, but maybe half of your monthly expenses. I mean, that's like a house payment, maybe. So, <clears throat> and there are, I, there, there may be some other stories too. I think in North Texas, there's a salon that's like just opening and they're getting citation, getting citations. And they're just saying, well, we're, I, I gotta work. So let's get more into this. <clears throat> Uh, six Republican congressmen from the state also condemned the governor's new orders on Tuesday. Your latest order is far too restrictive and includes provisions that seem arbitrary and internally inconsistent. Believe there is a better approach. They wrote in a joint letter signed by Reps Paul Mitchell, Fred Upton, Tim Wahlberg, Bill Hazunga, Zinga, John Molinar, and Jack Bergman. And this is it if you want to go to it and read it let's see if we can click, click on this right here let's see what it says uh, i think it's just uh uh dear governor what were we right to express our serious concerns with the most recent iteration of your stay at home stay home stay safe order executive order 2020-42 these concerns echo many being voiced in our communities and ones that you are currently hearing the covid pandemic is nearly unprecedented public health emergency your right to issue your initial executive order to slow the spread of the virus in an effort to flatten the curve. Also, get into that. Like, the curve essentially has been flattened. But now, because they did this whole stay-at-home stuff to flatten the curve so the so the healthcare system wouldn't be bombarded, like, all at once with all these people coming in. And now they essentially have flattened the curve, but now they're, like, moving the goalposts. Like, oh, no, we don't want anybody getting sick. Which there needs to be some kind of herd immunity in the population as a whole, and you're just prolonging it. I think I think it's Sweden that didn't do anything, and they should. And they're supposed to be like in the clear in a few in a week. It's supposed to be in the clear in a few weeks because they have like you know reached herd immunity. So we'll get back to that. You can read that if you want to. Actually. <clears throat> Uh, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is nearly unprecedented public health emergency. You were right to issue your initial executive order to slow the spread of the virus in an effort to flatten the curve. You also were well within your rights as authorities, as governor, while working with the state legislator and within the bounds of the Constitution to issue directives and guidance that you feel best serve the state. Unfortunately, your latest order is far too restrictive. It includes provisions that seem arbitrary and internally inconsistent. For example, with in individual stores, some entire sections are closed while consumers can still access other areas of the same building. Some prohibited activities that 
never require close contact with other individuals during normal operations are now prohibited entirely. We believe there is a better approach centers for disease control and prevention and fulfilling its defined federal constitutional duties has issued clear guidance to mitigate the transmission of the virus guidance that was developed by health experts. By following this guidance, uh, business can ensure people remain six feet apart, properly sanitize, set up sneeze guards and protective barriers, promote proper hand washing and cleaning techniques for their employee while also protecting customers with similar guidelines. Individuals can practice social distancing and mitigation techniques while avoiding activities that jeopardize the health of themselves or others. If businesses fail to establish and enforce proper social distancing, or if its citizens actually begin to endanger each other, then the state could take additional well-defined actions, but most people recognize the dangerous coronavirus and will act responsibly. See, I think the issue with this too is for some reason they lack, they seem to lack basic understandings of how people will enact or will act in response to things. If, for example, if Whitmer had come out like the South Dakota governor, I believe, Christine, is it known? If they would have come out and said the government is is not within the government's power for us to actually enact orders, but we highly suggest that you do these things, I think people would have done it. But once it, but once you start like forcing orders on people, they're going to be like, no, fuck you, we're not going to do this. We have the Bill of Rights. Constitutionally, you're not allowed to do it. And that's what a lot of these protests are happening for which they rightly should be you can't a pandemic a virus a bug a flu is not a reason to void people's civil liberties and their constitution and their constitutional rights i don't care if you're saying hundreds of thousands of people are dying which i think worldwide today it's up to like two hundred thousand. in the u.s maybe it's around 50 but even that is wrong because they're, they're padding the numbers and they're admitting that even if someone had died before this whole coronavirus thing if they'd been given like six months to live because of cancer and they just happened to test with COVID-19 they're counted as a COVID-19 death and I think part of the reason they're doing this too is because the federal funding is getting pushed into states that have the higher need for it like if they have more deaths related to that they're getting more federal funding in the state so they're financially incentivized to report as many deaths as they can as COVID-19 because even in uh, New York a week or two ago they admitted that there was like 3,700 people they had no clue they were like oh we just we just presumed as COVID deaths and they just threw them in there like no testing or nothing just like oh maybe they do maybe they don't yeah we'll say they do so even the numbers themselves are being, they're misrepresented. I may do a whole video if I can find all the different, because there's been individuals in the federal and state levels that have essentially said that, that even if COVID-19 wasn't the cause of the death, it's still counted as a COVID death, which I think is highly irresponsible, incredibly stupid. I mean, it needs to be, it needs to be very accurate so we can get actual accurate numbers of infection rate and death rate which even with those numbers it's still at like 0.3 to 0.5 percent but there are studies coming out of like i think new york california maybe texas like where they're kind of testing the populace for like antibodies and like depending where you're at it's like 13 it's 25 it's 33 i think even some places are up to like 50 percent of the population actually had and contracted this and they had antibodies, but they were like asymptomatic. So it's just kind of going through like the seasonal flu. And a lot of people have it. And either it's asymptomatic or it was uh, mild symptoms. And most of the deaths, which I'm not saying they're bad. They're still bad. But most of the deaths seem to be the elderly or people that have some kind of like immune compromised systems. Because I think they said like 95% of the deaths are... 16 above somewhere around there and that's the reason italy had a huge number of deaths because of the elderly population the amount of smokers they have and like being kind of unhealthy and everything but uh all right let me know what you think about this i'm trying to get 
this subscribe star setup and also a Teespring setup. Uh, if you want to support me that way, you can. If not, it's fine. If you're not able to, that's great. But uh, like I'm trying to do these daily if I can keep up with it. I have other stuff going on as well. But uh, you can give me a like if you like this and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, on Facebook, you can give me a uh, like and a follow if you want to on my page. I think I may try to get this on mine as well. I'm not sure about the video uh, components on that. Then maybe try to set up a bit shoot as well. Just try to get kind of information out there instead of trying to... Because I know there's a lot of people that if they watch it on Facebook, they wouldn't necessarily even go to YouTube to look it up or watch it. But uh, all right, have a good day. I think that's it. I think I've rambled enough about this. All right, peace.